Okay, thank you, Mr. Business Director. Uh, here to present about Des Moines Arts. A little background about myself. Born and raised in Des Moines. Family's been here for 150 years. Uh, I'm the youngest of three boys. We all went out east to the Wharton School to study business. As my middle brother says, we're all recovering Wall Street guys. Uh, I studied real estate and finance uh, and then entered into a career in real estate. Started off at Goldman Sachs in a real estate private equity firm. Went to another real estate private equity firm called Starwood Capital, best known for creating Starwood Hotels. And then the managing director and I went off and started our own real estate development company, focused on projects that had a social or an environmental bent to them. Moved back to Des Moines about six and a half years ago uh, to join my dad at Mandelbaum Properties and had a positive impact on the city through real estate, which was the only thing I knew. Uh, about a year after I moved back, I started down this path of creating Des Moines Arts. Simply put, it's a Nonprofit to create affordable studio space in Des Moines. Our mission is to create a 501c3 to provide permanent, affordable workspace for local arts to create a collaborative working environment and to engage the public through production, discussion, education, exhibition, and most importantly for the artist, sale of local art. And when I look at the art scene in Des Moines, we have a top notch art center for City of Arsada's world class sculpture park award-winning art festival year after year, social club, which has really propelled the local art scene. We have a lot of theater groups and local artists, and the missing piece is the permanent affordable studio space. So our vision is to become the nation's premier arts incubator, one that will transform the local art scene into a financially self-sustaining, economic, and cultural driver, fulfill that missing link that I talked about, and ultimately solidify the one's reputation as a city known for its support of the arts. And the project is based off a project that my former business partner and I did in Massachusetts called Western Avenue Studios. We founded it in 2004, we built it up floor by floor, and long story short, it's uh, one of, if not the, largest concentration of working artists under one roof in the country. We have 245 studios, 50 live work loss, somewhere between 300 and 350 artists working in that building and about 235,000 square feet of art space. And these pictures show sorry, uh, what the building looks like, it's a 100 year old building, and we basically built eight foot drywall partitions and the artists took care of making the space look interesting. The secret to the success of Western Avenue Studios is the critical mass. Once you have that many artists, you can afford to do things like monthly open studio events, which are basically farmers markets uh, of art. Uh, you can have uh, complimentary spaces like re recording studios and a gallery. And the artists took it upon themselves to do public outreach programming, like HIV benefits, programs for uh, teenagers after school, summer programs for youth as well, and really got involved in the community. So our goal is to take those lessons from Massachusetts, bring them here, do it as a nonprofit without the live work component. The very first thing we did was form a who's who advisory committee in terms of uh, business, political, uh, government, and philanthropic leaders. The main drivers on this committee, I would say, are Fred Hubble, uh, Conrad Weimer, Steve Zumbach, Super Radia, Radia, Angela Connolly, Chris Hensley, and Jeff Fleming. In a nutshell, the artist can, uh, the building has four main components. We have our studio spaces, we have our uh, specialty arts related spaces. We have space for arts related nonprofits and public spaces and I'll show those to you in the floor plan. But basically we're just providing cheap space. We'll do monthly open studio events uh, that Siobhan, our, our Siobhan Spain, our director, will coordinate. But otherwise uh, it'll be a staff light operation and we'll look to the artists to take care of any additional programming that they would like to put on or they would like to see in the building. The project has a couple of main benefits. Obviously, to the artist, it creates a collaborative work environment where they can learn from each other and have a permanent home. But we're really pitching this as an economic development tool. And when you think about it, Des Moines has a lot of artists, and most of them are, are working in their homes. And to me, that's an untapped economic resource. I mean, you combine all those artists under one roof, now you're transforming that into an economic driver that serves to attract the creative class to Des Moines. And then by extension, young professionals, more businesses, makes life more interesting uh, for you and me and the people that, that, that visit us. And the bottom point on this page is probably the most important, 
and that is that the Morton Arts is designed to be financially self-sustaining, eliminating the need for annual fundraising. So what that means is once you raise the money up front to buy the building and renovate the building, even though we're charging low rents to the artists, those low rents will be enough to cover operating expenses, a reserve fund, and to have a little bit left over from endowment every year. And the reason we're able to do that is because we're a nonprofit. So one, we can raise money so we don't have to have permanent financing on the building. And two, there's no developer making a profit. And uh, I've committed, and my dad has joined me on this project, we've both committed never to make a dime on this, no management fees, no development fees. It's our way of giving back to the community and we've given back uh, both in terms of time and money. The project provides measurable results for the three planning uh, events that are going on in town. So the tomorrow planned capital crossroads and Broadway's cultural replant, uh, basically by providing additional art space for the community. One of the first things that the advisory committee asked us to do was form a uh, demand study. So we launched demonarts.org and we put a survey of artists online. We ask them all types of questions, which I'll walk through uh, in, the, in the slides to follow. But basically, we had well over 400 artists express interest one way or another for the project. So we first asked them their discipline to check all that apply. Most of them are, are painters, sculptors, a lot of photographers, but Des Moines has all types of artists all across the board. We asked them to describe themselves uh, hobby artist, up and coming, and established. And what's neat about this project doesn't really matter what kind of artist you are, it works for everybody. Probably works best for the up and coming group who want to become established. This is the most important slide. We asked for their current workspace. Over 258 of these artists work at home. The second highest number have no studio. The third highest number are in random spaces in town. We really tried not to attract demand from the existing studio buildings in town. As you can see, for example, we only had four artists sign up Mark 316, so our demand is not coming from the existing spaces in town. The interesting thing about that, if you look across the, the country, artists make a neighborhood pool or a building pool and eventually get priced out for a higher or better use. And that's happened uh, at Des Moines Historically in East Village, it's happened in other buildings downtown, and it's happening right under our eyes at Art 316. Uh, come the end of October, those artists will be uh, forced out uh, and, and it'll be converted into apartments. And I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, we live in a capitalist society, that's why we're doing this as a 501c3, so it can stand the test of time. We asked them to check their desired space. Most artists want the individual studios, plenty are happy to share as well, but there appears to be a demand across the board for uh, rehearsal space, recording studio, video production, film and dark room, set production, and our philosophy is uh, at the end of the day, this is basically a real estate play. We need to achieve our rent, target rent per square foot. Uh, but if we can cater to, to as many uses as possible, it'll make the building that much more vibrant. We asked for their desired studio size, even anticipating pricing, which on our website we put at $7 a square foot plus utilities for a basic studio. So what does that mean? On a 350 square foot studio, that translates to about $204 a month plus utilities. Uh, that will increase with inflation, and if artists want a uh, premium spot in the building or the walls going all the way up to the ceiling, uh, they can just pay the premium for that. Most of the artists want the smaller studio size to keep their monthly rent outlay down. Uh, but we have 50 artists who claim that they want more than 600 square feet, and for $350 a month for a 600 square foot studio, and that's bigger than my apartment was in New York, and that's a great studio for someone who's selling out work during monthly open studio. There'll be a 24-7 building. Almost everybody's interested in participating in monthly open studio events. Most are interested in what we call a low-cost gallery, which will basically be a co-op gallery where you trade time for space, uh, and the artist gets to keep uh, almost all the proceeds. And then the most important question, level of interest. Probably not for me, but you never know. Interesting, keep me posted, and hell yes, I made it a moving yesterday. And we believe between the interesting team we posted and how yes, I needed to move in yesterday. We ought to have about 100 artists on day one who are ready to lease space, and we will pre lease the space four by four and phase it in over about a three year period. So we asked for sample comments from artists, and the one that I really like is from a lady named Rosemary Bunce. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that name correctly. I'm an unknown artist in the local community, but have sold internationally. Not currently in any local art scene, and I'm not sure how to be. 
this is my passion in life, and I'd like to share it. So, what building are we talking about? Uh, it's 900 key away, some people call it the Quest Building, CenturyLink Building. For those of you who don't know, if you take 235 to downtown, you come off the Keogh exit, and right where Keogh turns into 9th, it's on your right hand side. It's in this area in red right here, surrounded on two sides by principal, on one side by Methodist, and as many of you know, uh, Keogh is going under a major transformation right now with Come and Go, Jay Christensen's development, eBay, and it'll only continue to get better as the city has slated it for its next beautification. This is a very tight view of the building. It's a beige building, not too many windows, an interesting jagged window line along Keo. And that's a close up of the building at night, it looks a little darker. Uh, but we will completely transform the building by adding a lot of windows, adding some sort of lights and color to let people know that this is really an arts building. On the inside, most of the building is raw concrete. Uh, 12 to 14 foot ceilings, an interesting honey, uh, honeycomb pattern, and concrete floors. And our plans will be to pop windows all along the window line, so all the studios along the exterior will have natural light. Mike Simonson, Simonson Arch Associates Architects, have, has prepared floor plans for us. The building is a four and a half story, 164,000 square foot building. We have three floors of artist studios, one and a half floors of specialty arts uses. So this is the lower level, where we've labeled it as wood and metalworking studios, ceramic studios, dark room. The ground floor is the main entrance, so there's a, a nice two-story public atrium. Then you have our dance and theater rehearsal space, office space for arts-related nonprofits along that jagged window line on Keogh. We have a uh, theatrical set construction space, the kitchen, which we labeled as uh, low-cost culinary studio space uh, for culinary entrepreneurs, possibly food trucks. The interesting thing about this building, at its peak, it had 700 employees. So they had an enormous kitchen, an enormous cafeteria that we turned into our lease uh, banquet exhibit space. We think we can really utilize uh, all of that. Floors two, three, and four are what I call the mega studio floors. So uh, we have about 60 studios per floor program at 350 square feet per studio in this plan, uh, but when we do our pre-leasing, we'll, we'll allow artists to choose as big a studio as they want, uh, or almost as small as a studio as they want as well. Floor 3 and 4 is about the same, uh, with an opportunity to do uh, sound studios as well. A few final thoughts on this. We're doing a $4 million capital campaign. We're about a third of the way there. Our largest gift is from the Leadership Circle at the Community Foundation. They gave us $500,000 back in October, uh, which was twice the size of their largest, previous largest gift, and that allowed us to close on the door. Our goal is to open one floor studios by the end of 2015, uh, and we'll open the ground floor at that same time. And basically, uh, you know, I'd like to end this with a, a few thoughts. People ask me, why am I doing this? And, and I would give three reasons for that. One, because I successfully did it in Massachusetts, I almost feel a sense of duty to do this here in my hometown as a nonprofit. Two, we have the opportunity to create an amenity that even big cities don't have. Uh, if you look across the country, artists make cities cool. We look at Manhattan, we got priced out of Manhattan, we're going to Brooklyn, we're getting priced out of Brooklyn, we're going to cities like Austin and Portland. And that will continue to happen uh, forever, as far as I'm concerned, unless we do it in a nonprofit structure. So uh, we have an opportunity in Des Moines not only to attract artists, but to keep them because they'll never be priced out. And then the third reason would be I hope it serves as an inspiration to other people in town. If we can all commit to doing one thing to make Des Moines a special place, then I believe it will be by far the most desirable place uh, to live in this country. So with that, I thank Business Record for inviting me. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions.